It's Kegolasso weekend preview time. We have huge games this weekend. Manchester Derby, Madrid Derby. They're a classic, big games in Italy as well. Jimmy Conrad here to give us all the info, analysis, and betting tips. Stay right here. Weekend preview. Kegolasso begins right now. Everybody, welcome to Que Golasso Weekend Preview, our biggest episode of the week with the one and only Jimmy Conrad. Jimmy, what's up, man? Nothing. I'm excited. This is a big Derby weekend. There are a lot of games to talk about, some big ones that could determine who wins leagues and who doesn't. So I'm excited to get into it. Absolutely. And there's so much to talk about. So we're going to dive right in. And let's begin because there's huge games Huge games this weekend. Let's begin, Jimmy Conrad, with the Manchester Derby. Manchester United, Man City. Man City, of course, with a lot of breathing room in the Premier League table. Man United. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's an understatement, but continue. Yes, yes. No, a big understatement, correct. And Man United, obviously, uh, getting nothing out of that ridiculously boring game against Crystal Palace. So we'll see what happens this weekend. Hey, Manchester Derby, Jimmy Conrad, what do you have for me? So what we're going to do, I probably should have set this up when you first threw it to me, is that there's four big games in four leagues around the world or in Europe, top five leagues. And we're going to give you the goods on these four games and then give you some secondary ones that I think will have implications on what's happening. On. That's cool, Luis. I think we're cool by saying that. I love it. Let's do okay, it. Okay, cool. Okay, okay. So with City United, I'm just going to give you the lines first on William Hill. Minus 180 for City to win straight up. 310 for the draw. If you guys are thinking that's going to happen, <laughs> probably not. And then 500 for United to win. Probably not going to happen either. But we can humor it a little bit for all you Manchester United fans out there. Like, oh, please don't slander my team. Listen, we're not going to slander a team. Listen, you, three successive 0 0 draws. What do you expect us to Of course, we're going to slander your team. You guys can't score goals. Bruno Fernandez looks like he wants to lay down for six months because he's so goddamn tired carrying your team on his back. Okay. So I just took. I just took it from like zero to a thousand there. It was amazing. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the show. Okay, so Man City have, they have so much depth. Like they can rest Kevin De Bruyne. They can rest Phil Foden, who's only played 25 minutes over the last two games. They can rest all these top players and then still win games and still do it convincingly. We talked about the Wolves game where it got a little close there and Wolves maybe had a chance. And then City's like, oh, actually, we're going to flip the switch and score three goals on you guys in the last 10 minutes and win four to one. I mean, it's just, they are another level right now. And even though there was a 0-0 draw earlier in the league this season at Old Trafford, when they played in the League Cup semifinals at Old Trafford, City won 2-0. Now, John Stone scored in that game. Fernandinho scored in that game. So they got opportunities through set pieces, but they're better than that, that team that beat them 2-0. That was earlier in January. They're better than that. So what I really like from an odds perspective is City to win in over two and a half goals is plus 120. I feel like there's going to be some goals, at least on the City side. But then I think it, well, maybe this one will be tight. If we do see another 2-0, City winning in under two and a half goals at plus 300, I might even like that better. I do think that because Manchester United are vulnerable right now, at least going forward, they're obviously locking things down in the back because they've got three successive. You know, there, there's a silver line in all you United fans. You got three consecutive clean sheets. Uh, David De Gea is not going to be in, in, involved. Dean Henderson's going to get the start. David De Gea just had the birth of his first child. Congratulations to him. So he's going to miss the next six games for Manchester United. That's pretty significant. But Dean Henderson's been waiting for this opportunity this whole time. I just, I just don't know. They only got one shot on Palace this past week. Okay. They got four shots on goal against Chelsea, but one was from Fred. So does that count? I mean, I feel like it just trickled to the goalkeeper. Duh, just kidding, Fred. And McTominay. So if you have your two holding midfielders getting shots and none of them are from, from anybody else, Rashford had the other two and Fernandez didn't get any. I mean, I just don't know where they're going to generate that offense, Luis. And so I really feel like this is going to be pretty one-sided. And I think that City are going to do the business. And I don't think that's a big surprise to anybody. No, I don't think so. I think it's pretty much done and dusted. There's nothing that I'm seeing from United right now, to, let alone any team, let alone Man City, who, to your point about Wolves, Wolves actually played well. And then they ended up losing 4-1. That's how good Man but, City is. So, so here's, here's what I want to say. They, you say they play well. Wolves only had 30% possession. City had 70%. So, so let's take into account yeah, right that's now. That's well for Wolves. That's, true. that's City, fair. That's, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> that's fair. That's, that, no, that's my point. That's how good City is. Right, like, right, right. You right. can hold them. You can maybe get a goal. The fact that you can hold them to just 70%, that's how good I think Man City is right now. That if you have 30% possession, you're doing okay. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous how good they are. 
this is my big fear for Manchester United. They're already tired. Right. right? We, we know that Bruno Fernandes is tired. Yeah. What Man City do very, very well is that they keep the ball. And one of the worst things that you can do if, you, if, if you're playing is chasing other guys that know how to keep the ball. It's the worst. Everybody that's played the game or played any game and you know that the other team's better than you and they're going to hold possession and make you run and chase the whole time, that is exhausting. And, and so imagine if you're Manchester United, you're, you're defending in your own half for the whole time. When you finally win it, you've got 70 yards to try to go break down one of the best defensive teams in the Premier League and try to score. I, I just... The only way for me that United have any kind of chance is hitting them on set pieces. But but even then, they still have to generate some type of momentum going forward, either getting a corner or a free kick out wide. Like, they have to hold the ball up. And I don't know if Cavani's going to play. Martial looks like he's out. Pogba's out for sure, which I think is a big loss because he is dynamic in transition. Well, I am reading, though, Jimmy, that he could be in line for a return, Paul Pogba. Uh, oh, that, that would be amazing because we've, we've seen in the past, and I remember that famous game when they beat uh, City – at the Etihad, which City was going to win the league if they won that one, but Paul Pogba scored two goals and they ended up winning. I mean, so Pogba does have some history and does elevate his game to, to play against City, but even if Pogba plays, even I do believe it would help, I, I just don't I just don't see it. I, 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 I could see them minimizing the amount, the amount of goals that City score, but I just don't see them getting a, like a positive result. Not even no, not goal. at all. I'm with you 100%. There's two things here. One, listen, if you're going to try and beat Man City, the only way, the only way is to literally risk your house here and just fight fire with fire. Because aside from the possession thing that Man City have, they're also excellent at getting possession back. Mm -hmm. Like, actually, that's Guardiola's biggest obsession, mm -hmm. to retain it once again, you lose it. If you ever watch a Man City game, please watch it. Go back on YouTube, do whatever you got to do. The moment they lose the ball, they, like bees, swarm to try and get it back. The only way United can do anything is by fighting fire with fire. And it's just not going to happen. I don't see it happening. It's not an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer thing to do to just like, you know, you're going to press. We're going to press. We're going to go high up. We're not going to. And you have to do it for 90 minutes. It's just it's very difficult. Very difficult. Yeah. I would say another value to look at on William Hill is the clean sheet for Manchester City. That is plus 138. So if you're looking for a little bit something that might be more of a guarantee, that might be the way to go. But yeah, it's tough. It's tough. And so the other games, let's transition into the other Premier League games. Well, but I'd give me your final score prediction for that one before. Oh, we... I'll say I'll say two zero Manchester City. Okay, I'll do the yeah. same thing. <laughs> it's gonna be pretty obvious. I, I think yeah. I'm going with two 0 as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the well, next I'll... one, the other one in the Premier League. Well, so there's two, and I bring this up because it's between Arsenal and Tottenham. Now they're okay. not playing each other this week, but they do play each other each other next week. Okay, so the North London Derby happens next week. There's only two points to separate them in the table. Burnley hosts Arsenal and Crystal Palace travel to Tottenham Stadium to play Tottenham. I'm keeping my eye on these two in particular. I'm not giving you any odds on these, but I think it's, it's such a great narrative to see what kind of form they're going to be in for such a massive North London Derby next week as both try to like scrape back into the top six conversation. And so you got to keep your eyes on these two results in particular, how they're playing, what they look like, how everything is shaping up for them. So I just wanted to throw that out there as, yes, these aren't very sexy games on paper. Again, if I, you'd have to pay me to watch Crystal Palace play. I just, I just can't – I can't get – I watched it yesterday, and I completely regretted it. Of course, they are playing United, who didn't do much either. And then Burnley Arsenal, you couldn't you, – you'd have to pay me some, some money to watch that one as well. But – when those two play against each other, I think it's important to see what their form is going to be heading into that. So, so, so yes, big games this weekend for, for some, some teams, obviously we could make a narrative around all the teams in the Premier League because we're getting close to the end, but, but those two in particular with the North London Derby next week. Yes, that is some scintillating stuff, Luis. Well, yeah, I mean, it's also Europa League and, you know, trying to climb up that table. It's a very big deal, of course. Did you want to say briefly mention Chelsea Everton? Uh, anything there on the yeah, line? Yeah, so, so Chelsea Everton's on Monday, so we could probably touch upon it a little bit on Sunday. But, yeah, that's going to be a big game as well. I Really, from my perspective, they both need those points. So very similar to the North London Derby ones that I, that I spoke about. I just want Chelsea to be uh, – uh, I want I want Tuchel to take off the handcuffs and let that team breathe a little bit and go forward with some some – real numbers but there's there seems to be such an emphasis on on defending that they're not really attacking with that purpose that we know that they have i mean it's not like we're looking at them going oh well you know they're who are they going to attack with because they're burnley or they're west brom and we just don't know right there's like one guy that you're like oh, i mean he can maybe do something special chelsea's got special players all over the field and you just want to see them have the freedom to really express themselves and i don't think we're seeing that 
as much or not as consistently as I am sure Tuchel would like, but he hasn't figured it out. He's got the defending side figured out because he just puts a lot of really good, hardworking guys behind the ball that know what they're doing. But on the other side, it seems like they're just a little bit limited. And then with Everton, you just don't know which version of Everton is going to show up, right? The one, the one that can hang with any, any of the top teams or and, and beat Liverpool, you know, even though Liverpool is not the same Liverpool this season or the one that loses the Fulham at home, right? So I'm curious as to, to which version of Everton is going to show up. And then, of course, are we going to see this free-flowing attacking side from Chelsea? Probably not. Tuchel seems to be pretty conservative, all things considered. And by the way, we're taping before Everton faces uh, West Bromwich Albion and Chelsea faces Liverpool. So take that with a pinch of salt. Mm -hmm. All right, listen, Premier League, bye-bye. And hello, La Liga, because there's a huge game as well. One more derby here. Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid, the Madrid derby. Just massive. Just absolutely massive. Obviously, Champions League, Atleti leads the table with a game in hand, but Sevilla's, I mean, Barcelona's closing in, of course. What do you have for me here? So I'm going to give you the odds first on William Hill. Atleti to win straight up at home, 163, plus 163, plus 225 for the draw. I might be leaning to that. I don't know. I don't want to, I'll, I'll, I'll tease it a little bit. And then Real Madrid to win a straight up plus 175. So the last meeting between these two, if you guys remember, Madrid won 2-0. For me, this was the best week of Madrid's season. They ended up beating Borussia Mönchengladbach on the last match day in the Champions League. This is back in December. And they won the group. They somehow squeaked their way into winning their group. I don't know how they do it, but that's what Madrid does in the Champions League. They win their group. And then the following game, they beat Atletico Madrid 2-0. That was, for me, still the best week I've seen, given the competition and, and what was at stake from Real Madrid this season, because they were complete performances. I think the big knock, if you're watching Madrid and even Barcelona, who have started to turn that that uh, trend but a lot of the times when they struggle it's only because they were good for 45 minutes or they were good for 60 but they weren't putting together complete performances and I thought this week against Munchen Gladbach and against Atleti the first time around they were excellent for all 90 minutes and they showed why they're one of the best teams in the world when they can turn it on and be that good my, my big concern for Madrid in this game is Carvajal still out so they're missing that outside back that really helps them I think Odria Zola can be there or Vasquez still Carvajal is such an is such a upgrade there and then Eden Hazard's always hurt. We know that one. But Benzema, Benzema could be hurt. They're maybe just playing some, some mind games, you know. But without Benzema, Madrid just feel a little bit less lethal. And so that gives me some concern. I don't know the lineups yet. Obviously, we're a couple of days out from the game kicking off. I will say, this is a fun fact for you. The last time Atleti beat, it's been a while since Atleti beat uh, Madrid in the league. But there was a friendly in New York. I don't know, Luis, if you were there. It was a 7-3 game. It was a friend. I was there. Joao Felix's first like meaningful game, even though it was a friendly uh, for Fort Letty. He scored the first goal. I was like five feet away from him when he scored. I was right behind one of the goals. It was ridiculous. Seven, three, like everything they were doing hit the back of the net. And everybody's like, oh my God, Joao Felix is going to be a god. Letty's going to go on to be like the best team in Europe. And that didn't actually happen, but, but uh, it, was a, it was an incredible performance. And, and I don't think they're going to be able to tap into that. That was a special night for them. And it was a friendly, of course. But everybody was rolled out. Like they, they made sure they put out their best players in New York. And obviously you want to perform well when you're over in the States, everybody's watching. So here's what I'm going to say. Atleti finally got a big win this past weekend against Villarreal 2-0. It wasn't great in, in terms of overall performance, but they got the result that they needed against a very good team. Joao Felix finally scored. And he, I don't know if you saw it or not, but he like yelled at Diego Simeone after he scored. You got to love the anger that he showed. And Simeone loved it afterwards, which is even better. Uh, Madrid are, are on, Real Madrid that is, are on a, a six game unbeaten streak. They've won five of those six. They just Drew with uh, Real Sociedad 1-1 on the weekend. I think the most important thing, this is six games over uh, all, all competitions. They've only given up two goals over those six games. I think that's a, a marked improvement on what we've been seeing from them recently. I like the draw, everybody. I'm going, I'm going with the draw. I like a 1-1 here, to be honest. There's so much at stake in this game, Luis, that, that I could see it being somewhat like we're seeing in the Premier League, that trend we talked about yesterday where – where when the top, top six teams, couple top teams play each other, they, they're more focused on not losing than they are than going out and like, how am I going to win this game? It's more like, hey, let's just, let's just try to share the points. Not that that's said out loud, but just there are some conservative tactics I'm sure the coaches are employing that, that kind of lend itself to that, that thought and ideology. So I like to draw like under two and a half goals at plus 270. That's the favorite line of that if you have the over, under on goals and, and a result. Uh, but to draw... And under two and a half goals plus 270. Do 
I, I mean, Jimmy Conrad, I, after all of that, you're giving me a draw, a draw <laughs> in one I of am. the best derbies in the game. Listen to me. Listen to me. Atletico Madrid is coming out for blood here. No Kareem Benzema, maybe. I'll, I just go back to what Luis who, Suarez who, said. Who, who, hold who, up, hold who, up who. a second. Hold up a second. I'm just going back to what Luis Suarez said earlier this week to Liga TV. He's like, look, playing against Real Madrid is something special. All right. You really want to play in these games and show your ability. Everybody's watching and waiting to see what you can do. And in our case, we've got the added incentive of trying to avenge our defeat earlier this season. I feel that Atleti is going for blood. I don't think it's going to be like five all or seven, three, whatever. But I feel Atleti is going to win this one with no Kareem Benzema. I'm sorry, but that's that's tremendously difficult for Real Madrid, despite of the good results that they had recently. Okay. That's fair. I don't know who's going to draw blood. If Benzema doesn't play, I don't know. I don't know who's going to draw blood for Madrid. I just. No, no, know. I'm going for an Atleti win here. I OK, that's true. That's true. Okay, I, so just, I, I just think Luis Suarez is going to be up. He's going to be up for it. He's going to be up for it. I will say this. I, I, I found this pretty cool stat, which I think maybe could influence some of how you guys want to bet this game. Only two of the last 10 between these two have been won by the hosts. And just <laughs> one out of five, just one out of five saw over two and a half goals. Also, only one out of five saw more than one of the two teams score. So somebody had a clean sheet in four of these, right. which I mean, which means I expect it to be pretty tight, especially yeah. because, as I mentioned, there's a lot at stake. I believe, though, and this is the other game I wanted to bring up, the secondary game, as I mentioned before, in La Liga, Osasuna hosts Barcelona. The big mm -hmm. winner in all this, especially if there's a draw, could be Barcelona, who are unbeaten in the league since December. So right now the table is at Leti have played 24 games and they have 58 points, okay? Barcelona have played 25 games, they have 53 points. Real Madrid have played 25 games and they also have 53 points. This is such a massive game for Atleti. It's, it's a huge weekend in Spain. It's so, it's so, it's so big. And it's before the Champions League returns it's for all. so big, yes. So this is going to be a fantastic game. I mean, obviously the two, two games we've talked about so far are going to be amazing. All right, so you're giving me 1-0 in that one. I am. I know. <laughs> I know. I talked with so much energy and enthusiasm and hype, and I gave you the old 1-1 one, one draw. No, I think that's what you do sometimes, right? You're like, trying to like <laughs> you're, you're, you're pitching such a great movie, but the movie is really like... Oh, best. man. <laughs> My wife could come in here and talk about our love life. Like, yeah, yeah, he talks a big game, and then... Blah, blah, blah. Sorry, too much information. Let's move it on. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, we're going to take a quick break here <laughs> because I want to talk more uh, to Jimmy's wife about this. But when we come back... <laughs> When we come back, plenty more games, by the way, including that classicer and much more in Serie A as Juve host Lazio. Stay right here. Kego Lasso will be right back. Hey, Jimmy, guess what? What, Luis? I wanted to let you know about Paramount Plus, which just launched today. Oh, my God, that is amazing. It's amazing. You've probably seen the journey to Mount Paramount, spots featuring Bill Cowher, James Corden, Patrick Stewart, Beavers and Butthead. <laughs> yeah, Paramount Plus. <laughs> uh, uh, settle down, Beavers. Give me some TP for my bunghole. I need TP for my bunghole. <laughs> <laughs> this is quite a squad, my friend, but Paramount Plus is live sports, breaking news, and a mountain of entertainment. You can go straight from game day to movie night uh, with Paramount Plus. Stream iconic movies like The Godfather. I never wanted this for you, Michael. I never wanted this for you. Or Indiana Jones. Oh, Indiana Jones. I love it. He chose poorly <laughs> <laughs> and mission impossible Trrr, dun, 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 dun. and new episodes of critically acclaimed original series like star trek picard the good fight and the stand and get this jimmy it's what? where you can dive live sports live sport <laughs> baby including the nfl march madness the masters and of course the champions amazing stream hit shows from cbs nickelodeon mtv bet smithsonian channel and comedy central live sports breaking news and a mountain of entertainment paramount plus jimmy streaming right now what do you think about that i can't wait i, I figure i'm gonna just be on paramount plus for the rest of my life so that's cool. <laughs> i need tv for my bongo <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to Kego Lasso Weekend Preview. Jimmy Conrad, Jimmy C, let's go to Germany. That classic car. My God, what a game. What do you have for me? 
So this game is intense as well. Bayern Munich are on top of the table over RB Leipzig by two points. And Borussia Dortmund are hanging on by a thread to try to get in that top four conversation. They're, they're still on the outside looking in. I thought I had that ready to go for you guys, and I don't. They are on uh, 39 points. So they're three points behind Eintracht Frankfurt for that last Champions League spot. This is a must win for them. Last time these two teams played, Bayern Munich won three to two. I don't know what that means now. Bayern are starting to round into good form. Thomas Moore's back in the team. Serge Gnabry's back in the team. They definitely helped them beat FC Cologne this past weekend, 5-1. My favorite thing, and I've said this before, but I wanted to reiterate it because I think it's super hilarious. So Thomas Muller, who for me is the glue in the midfield for Bayern Munich, really brings everybody into the game, helps them transition, and obviously has a great relationship with Robert Lewandowski. He'd been out due to COVID, okay, since the FIFA Club World Cup. And he came back into the team came on in the 53rd minute in the 54th minute. So we could argue it's less than a minute since he's been on the field. He sets up Robert Lewandowski with a nice little dime. Lewandowski scores. And this is, these guys are ridiculous. Maybe the best duo in the world, but maybe doesn't get talked about enough because everybody's like, Hey, Min's son and Harry Kane. And, me, 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 me. <laughs> and, and I get it, right? I get it. But these two are excellent. They know each other inside and out. And I feel like that relationship and, and the fact that Bayern seemed to be kind of shedding that tiredness and fatigue they showed from the club world cup afterwards. And they dropped some points. I, I, I like, I like Bayern to do the business here. However, I don't want to take anything away from, from, from Jaden Sancho who scored five goals in his last six games have really turned it on for Borussia Dortmund early in Holland and Borussia Dortmund overall, ever since Marco Rose has been named as their new coach, they're doing pretty well. Whereas Marco Rose and the team he's currently coaching Munch and Gladbach have yet to win since that announcement coincidence. I think not. Luis. No. So I really like Bayern to win in over two and a half goals. It's minus 118. So you have to bet $118 to win 100. That's not really that sexy, right? So let's talk about Lewandowski. The guy has scored 28 goals in 22 games. This is crazy fun fact. He has scored at least two goals against his former club, Borussia Dortmund, in five consecutive games at the Allianz Arena. And that is a crazy, crazy, crazy ass stat. Okay. <laughs> That's wild. That's what I wanted to say. So, so with Moeller back, Nabry back, I think it makes a big difference. Lewandowski to score. I went and found some value for you guys. Lewandowski to score a header plus 360. That I like a lot. Oh my God. Are you serious? Lewandowski, yeah. Yes. Isn't that crazy? Like printing money. Lewandowski to score first plus 210. So those are the ones that I'm kind of looking at right now. I uh, take into consideration. And then this was a wild stat too. Bayern have scored 67 goals, 67 goals in their 23 Bundesliga games this season, which is a new club record. We kind of feel like, I don't know how it feels for you, but when I think about Bayern this season, I feel like they've had a bit of a drop off, but that is crazy that they've set a club record through 23 games in the Bundesliga scoring 67 goals. Uh, I, so th they're going to hit the back of the net. So is Borussia Dortmund. It's just a matter of which, which side you want to go and who you want to bet. But I like Bayern to do the business. It's going to be a goal fest because both teams, yeah, a little bit on the defending side could be better, but that's what I got. No, got? that's beautiful. Great lines, great info. And listen, like, I think I'll just go with the last part of what you just said there. The thing, all these games that we're talking about, Manchester Derby, the Madrid Derby, this one, this one proves to hopefully give us goals and a lot of entertainment because of two reasons. One, what you just said, just defensively at the back, both sides are not really showing their best things. I mean, listen, Bayern Munich is an absolute machine, but they're only two points above RB Leipzig. They're not like absolutely running away with this league. And for Borussia Dortmund, they're not in a Champions League spot right now. They need to really make sure that they climb up that table to guarantee European qualification unless they win the Champions League, of course, which is something I don't obviously see happening. On both sides, you can take something from either one, right? FC Bayern have lost more competitive games against Borussia Dortmund than any other side, any other side. So if there's one team that can hopefully get something out of this, it's Borussia Dortmund. Having said that, having said that, Borussia Dortmund have lost their last four Bundesliga games against Bayern Munich. They just it's, it's like two big forces going up against each other. Just one happens to be a little bit stronger, a little bit bigger. And to your point, Robert Lewandowski, I think Muller being back, I think that's a big deal. Haaland, even Erling Haaland alone, I don't think can sustain everything that Bayern Munich brings. I'm going to give it to Bayern Munich. I'm trying to figure out the scoreline right now. So before I do that, why don't you finish up with some notes? Because I'm still trying to figure it out. No, I I just wanted to say that Jaden Sancho came off with a bit of a knock in their last game. Okay, uh, so he's not 100%. He's not 100%. Either is Rafael Guerrero, who, who's their, their marauding left back, who likes to get forward and join the attack. If either one of those guys is out, that is a significant loss for Dortmund because of what they do for the team, especially in transition, and obviously with Jaden Sancho being in great form right now. So 
Yeah, that 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 is something to keep an eye on. Here are other some some other odds you should look at. Match results. So Bayern Munich to win both teams to score is plus one thirty. If you think it's going to be both teams to score and a draw, it's plus three forty. Both teams are going to score, so you should really look that's, at these. That's lineups. definitely happening, everybody. Yeah. So and then Dortmund, Dortmund, both teams to score and win is plus five hundred. Now another one, if you want to take it a, like one more step, Robert Lewandowski to score, Bayern Munich to win, both teams to score is plus two hundred. That that has paid. I, I, I bet that a lot, and that hits a lot. That's a uh, one. It, it, it is it is a winner in a lot of different ways. It just depends if you want Bayern. If you think Bayern are going to win, or hey, where is this game? It's at the Allianz. Okay. I feel like Bayern Munich. Anytime they play Borussia Dortmund, Borussia Dortmund's usually littered with top young talent, right? Obviously, super talented, but young. And Bayern Munich's like, listen, we respect that you guys are good, but you're not as good as us. And they're the big brother to the little brother. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, we'll let you play for a little bit, but then when it's time to actually win the game, we're going to win because we're better. And that's what big brothers do. And I suspect that Bayern Munich will do the same. This is a big one for them too. They can't drop points. Uh, RB Leipzig is traveling to Freiburg. Freiburg has been pretty solid this season and probably be playing over what they're capable of. They haven't been as good, but they had a nice run there for maybe last month where they were six or seven unbeaten. That's not going to be the easiest game for RB Leipzig, but one they should win knowing what's at stake and the fact that they could maybe catch Bayern Munich this weekend if, if Bayern do drop points. So Bayern definitely have to be be sharp and ready to go. And obviously with their Champions League 4-1 win over Lazio and, and their 5-1 win this past weekend, I feel like they're rounding into some pretty good form yet again. Bayern Munich rounding into form is one of the certainties in life. So yeah. Uh, well, like, yeah, like, like, like Barcelona, Jimmy, like Barcelona, Leipzig is probably hoping for a draw here as well yes. with the, the yes. Africans to make sure that they can climb up the table. I, I'm still going with a Bayern win. Jaden Sancho worries me now that you're talking to me if he's not 100%. I'm sure he will be, but I don't know. If he has a knock, it might be a problem. It's Limited. Um, where's Gio Reyna playing these days, Jimmy Conrad? Do they still have him out wide? What's going on? Yeah, no, I think they're trying to play him more central. I think they've started to go back to what gave them success earlier in the season underneath, you know, not necessarily the 10, not necessarily out and out winger, you know, kind of in that pocket between the two lines and between maybe the outside back and the, and the center back for opposing teams. That's where he does his best, finding those pockets between the lines and yeah. then being able to turn and run at the back line. He's not as good out wide, and I don't think he likes playing out wide. I don't see any enthusiasm from him when he's there. He'll, he'll do it. He'll give his best, but it doesn't feel like he's comfortable. Well, he's so, not a winger. He's not a winger. No, no. Marco Royce hasn't scored in like 800 Bundesliga minutes or something, so maybe he's due to score. That's something to consider. But what I wanted to do with you, Luis, these are the three big derbies. We're going to talk about a big one in, in Italy really quick. But let's just – you want to do a parlay here with these three big derbies? We've got the Man City Parlay derby. party. we got the Madrid derby and the Der, Der Classico. I mean, these are three massive matches. So, so we just have to decide, you and I, what we want to go with. We, right, we, think, we think City's going to win, right? Of course. Yep. Man okay. City's winning. City's winning. Okay, I got that one. So City's winning. And then what are we going with the Madrid? You got Atleti. I have Atleti, but you have a draw. I so do. You have to go one way or the other. Okay, hold on. Let's see. Let me get because that. Up. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, everybody. Okay. Here, if you're making up your own at home or whatever, there are two things. Well, first of all, the one thing that we're both sure of is that Man City's winning this. Man City's winning this regardless. Okay. So we'll just say Atletico Madrid wins. Okay. I'll give you that one. We'll see what that looks like and we can take it back. Okay. And then and then go from there. Hold on. Let me get that. So that's Atletico Madrid and so Man City winning, Madrid City. or Atleti winning, excuse me, and Man City. And Bayern winning. Yep. What's that? And if Bayern, okay. So that three way parlay. So that's the three league leaders winning. I'm not that's all that's all the home that. team, all the home teams winning as well. Right. So City to win, Atleti to win, Bayern to win. That plays plus 530 so if we bet 10 we win 53 bucks dude that's a very good that's not bad i mean if you can throw some that's that's a little higher than i thought no we're rolling with that we okay hold on hold on hold on well let me see what the draw looks like instead of it's gonna come out and be like you're boring jimmy it's not <laughs> oh, come on that hurts my soul okay if you throw the draw in there between the madrid clubs instead of atleti winning straight up it's plus 680 Oh, I'm just throwing that out there. And uh -huh. I'll go with you. I'll go. With, usually you lean my way and I appreciate that. You're a good friend, but I'll lean towards you this week. So we'll do you all know three what's going to happen, winning. right? <laughs> oh, I do know what's going to happen. And I'm going to absolutely tear you a new one on Sunday's uh, podcast. It's going to be amazing. I just but, don't uh, listen. If I'm going down, I'm going down with a gamble. I don't want to <laughs> go with a that's draw fair. there. Okay, you Venmo me $5. We'll bet 10 bucks and we'll okay. see if we come back. Everybody cool. that's listening, if you guys want to hop in on this, let us know who you're going to bet. Hit us up on Twitter at Pod or at Jimmy Conrad or Luis Miguel. What is it? LM? Um, 
There you go. You know it. Come on. You should know it by now. I should, but like I always see your name in front of actually the handle. So I, I know, know I know. L M Echegaray. But to Jimmy's point, let us know what you think on Keolaso Pod, the Parlay Parte. We have Man City, Atleti, and Bayern Munich winning. But if you wanted to play around with it, as Jimmy said, maybe better odds when uh, you have a uh, Atleti and a Real drawing. So we'll see what happens. Hey, listen, let's move to Italy here, Jimmy Conrad. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. So Juventus the big one is host Lazio, right? Yeah, Juve hosting Lazio. This is a big one. There's a bigger one on Monday. The secondary one that I was going to bring up is Inter Milan versus Atalanta. That is uh, going to be a tasty I mean, affair. But, but fun as hell. We'll, 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 we can maybe we can maybe touch upon that um, uh, on Sunday a little bit. But the big one though is Juve versus Lazio. Juve are the favorites minus one eighteen, two sixty for the draw, three thirty for Lazio to win straight up. Juve are seven points back, Luis, and of Inter Milan. It is a must win for them if they really want to stay in the conversation of winning a Scudetto for the 10th straight season, which I don't even, I hope they don't win because I'm tired of them winning. But if they want, if they want to stay in it and all the Juve fans out there, then yes, they have to win this one. Lazio are one point back of the top six. So it's also a must win for them. Yeah. Let's go look at the Juve though, really quick. Their, their schedule is Lazio this weekend. They got Porto midweek. They got Cagli- Cagliari. I can never say that one right. Who are Cagliari. The rele- Cagliari, who are in a relegation fight. Okay. So they'll be ready to scrap. And then they have Napoli. So this next 10 days for Juve are going to be really important for them in so many different ways. Now, Lazio, if you remember, were the talk of the town for about a month or so there. They'd won six straight league games. They had got their way back into, well, maybe Lazio can finish in the top four. They're starting to clip the heels of all the teams in the top four. But then they lost to Inter Milan 3-1 after those six straight wins. They then got embarrassed by Bayern Munich at home in the Champions League 4-1. And then they lost to Bologna. 2-0. 2-0. Bologna's okay. They're mid-table, but but they shouldn't have lost that. So they're in the midst of a bad run of form. The defending has been shocking, is 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 being nice. And this is really a bad time for them to, to start to hit this dip in form, unfortunately. But they do have Chiro the Hero Moble, who we both love. Uh, he's got 14 goals in the league this season. And from, from a personal level, he probably wants to get up to that 20 mark because he's trying to be one of the key guys for Italy over the summer in, in the euros. Right. So now you have to start, we haven't really brought up this narrative at all, but now that as the season draws near to the end, you want, you got to think about players that are trying to maybe be on these national teams to play in significant tournaments over the summer for their countries. So yep. being, being in good form is very important. I think cheer the hero will, will uh, answer that call. That said, I don't know if you saw this or not. I think we talked about it a little bit. Cristiano Ronaldo scored his 20th league goal. It's, it's the 12th consecutive season that Cristiano Ronaldo scored 20 league goals. It, isn't that crazy, dude? Yeah, it's I mean, amazing. It's amazing. 30, the guy's 36. He's a robot. I don't think he's actually a real human being. He's a robot, and that is incredibly impressive. I think he still shows up and, and does the business. I like Juve to win and both teams to score plus 225. Yeah, I go with that. I I, I like the, the, when it comes to this game. I think it's about canceling each other out, each other's out strength, right? So Chiro Immobile, you cancel him out with Cristiano Ronaldo. The problem is, is like for Lazio, is that Juventus, right? I think are going to welcome back Bonucci, right? And potentially, you know, potentially, right now, what I'm seeing is that the ball is out. But let's just talk about the back line. You got Chiellini. Uh, John Square, also known as Juan Cuadrado, is who's been a revelation at, at outside back this season. Uh, he's out. Benucci's out. Archer's out. Right, protecting that back four. And then uh, uh, Matty, Ma- Matthias Delict or Delict is out as well. He pulled okay, out. That's of the, a big deal. Yeah. So the, their back line is really thin. So it's looking like it's going to be Danilo, uh, Demiral, and Alexandro, and maybe Ferbata. Depends. But they 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 don't really have any proper center backs. And Chiro the Hero Mobile is going to eat, eat those dudes up and spin them out. But and, on the and, other uh, side there, Jimmy, you go Federico Chiesa, you do, you do, uh, Ronaldo. Do. No, but I think you make a good point. Also, Lazio have a little bit of a breathing space because they didn't play Torino That's true. That's in true. midweek because Torino had to uh, cancel their game, suspend their game due to COVID. So they're a little bit rested. They're a little bit ready. As you mentioned, Lazio is trying to climb up that table. Juventus still with the hope that they can catch up to Inter, although it seems... Uh, difficult, but they could still maybe do it. I, I like what you just said before. Juventus to win, both teams to score. Plus 225. I, I I was ready, though, because I think there is an argument to be made that there could be a draw here. I don't see Juve losing this, but I could see them lo- dropping two points and, and just getting the draw. Juve to draw both teams to score is plus 340. And I then Andrea say- Pirlo is saying that he's not sure if Morata will start. Like, yeah, so, yeah, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm on the, also on the fence for this one. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo to score, and then Juve to win either 1-0, 2-0, or 2-1. That's plus 400. 
I'm, con I'm considering that a little bit because that dude does seem to show up for the most important games. And I feel like this is a super important game for Juve. And with defensive issues for Juventus, you would think that they would, they could c concede, but still win the game. So you still would have like a two, one, I think a two, one seems about reasonable enough, right? That's a good, yeah, it defense. does. It does. Lazio's defending hasn't been great either. Right. So it's not like right. Lazio's coming into this. They were a month ago or a couple of weeks ago, pretty, pretty stout defensively, but their, their confidence is shaken a hundred percent. And I think that when you're playing against world-class players, like a Ronaldo, he smells that man. He smells blood, you know. And and uh, if 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 Juve can score early, then I think that lends itself to a win. But if they can keep it, lots of can keep it to zero zero, then we might see a draw and maybe a one one. I don't know. It's it's going to be a, a great. I love all the tactics. You guys know this at this point. You've done enough podcasts with us, and I, I love all like these little subtleties and nuances to the game and what managers try to do. So I'm looking forward to all four of these big games. And then as I mentioned, the Inter Milan Atalanta one on Monday is going to be a cracking. How many good games on Monday? It's all a cracking uh, affair on Monday. It's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous way to start. And by the way, we're not going to comment too much on Inter because as we're taping, it's before their game away mm -hmm. at Parma. But Juventus also have a game in hand to Inter Milan as well, even though they're seven points behind. So, you know, narratives can change. But to your point, Jimmy Conrad, this weekend is ridiculous. So okay. many games, so many huge games. Um, I like that parlay. So remember, everybody, let us know what you think about it. But, Jimmy, before we say goodbye, any final words uh, as we look ahead to the weekend, a very busy weekend of action? No, I'm excited. I, I also let us know what your favorite snacks are when you watch these big games. I, I, uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, in, I, I'm in a spot where I'm looking for some new snacks in my life. So, so hit me up. You're trying to be healthy. You're trying to just rock it out. I have, cause I have one cheat day, right? Me and my wife. Yeah, you should have a cheat. Day. You should have a cheat day, right? But I it's, mean, usually, I try, I, it's usually Friday, uh, not Friday Saturday. night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Friday night, I'm asleep, bro. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I I will say that I am in the market for kind of any snack out there. I try to stay away from processed foods, but when we're talking snacks, it's pretty much all there is available. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm open to whatever. Be creative. Hit me up at Jimmy Conrad or hit us up at K Golasso Pod. Yeah, let us know your snacks. I'll give you one here, Jimmy Conrad. Okay. Tostones. Tostones. I, okay. I know tostones. I haven't had them in a while, though. So you buy a bunch of plantains, everybody. You just cut them. You slice them up. You put them in the oven. You take them out and you squish them. Ooh, baby. Tostones. Really good. We had them for Super Bowl. So good. I'm writing that down out of respect for you. <laughs> out of respect? <laughs> you better do it. <laughs> Jimmy Conrad, always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure, Luis Miguel. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We appreciate you. Hey, everybody. I want to thank Jimmy Conrad for joining me today. Don't forget to follow us on Kegolasso Pod. Follow us on Kegolasso Pod and listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. We're on cbssports.com. We're on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Kegolasso. Please keep supporting us as we continue to grow. Enjoy all the games this weekend, and we will see you next time. Have a great day.